Hey everybody, Jason Burmis here, and this is a story that I really wasn't aware of, but it was something I grew up with, and when I saw these new allegations, basically in one of my feeds, and I couldn't confirm everything that was in the feed, but I did find some rather striking information. So if you're uh, watching me now and you see the two uh, gentlemen in the suits, they were a very, very, very politicized murder in uh, the late 80s and then the trial through uh, the early 90s all over the place where uh, the Menendez brothers, in my opinion, after looking at this now, were completely demonized and a lot was not made clear. So what am I talking about? Well... I also, I got to tell you, I'm so unhooked from pop culture. I didn't realize that this had been made into one of those law and order uh, crime shows, you know, reminiscent of the O.J. Simpson case with the Menendez brothers. So I'm going completely uh, blank on that, but I'm familiar with this case. So they had claimed that they were sexually abused by their parents, and they gruesomely killed them. I mean, I remember they were showing still shots of what they could of what they had done all over the place, all over the place. And then on top of that, they portrayed them as like spoiled rich kids that were on a spending spree and a vacation afterwards, and that they had staged it to look like a mob hit. What was not emphasized at the time, and I feel absolutely should have been, were the, the fact that, you know, they were talking about some high-level sexual abuse by their very, very powerfully connected Hollywood father. And if you've been paying attention to this channel, you know that Hollywood is into some sick stuff. So before we get into this story, which I missed from 2017, I want you to, you know, take a look at this through the years. You know, look, they always had them with their eyebrows down and look, they look how sinister they always looked. They looked so sinister. Now there was a first trial, which was in a mistrial. Then they got convicted. I believe they both got life in prison. They were separated for 22 years before they saw each other again. Now, the sexual abuse was so horrific from the father that apparently the older brother of, of, you know, was also sexually abusing his younger brother, you know, without really knowing it, I guess, because they were so young at the time. And so finally, I want to read this. And it, one of the cousins spoke out. We're going to get into a lot deeper, obviously, if you saw the thumb. Because his Hollywood connections and his producer connections also reached that to the mega boy band Menudo, in which probably in this country, Ricky Martin is the most visible of those members, but it was a generational boy band. And people of my generation will certainly at least remember it being spoken of. And even my parents' generation is when it started to get popular. So let's get into this. The cousin of Lyle and Eric Menendez brothers who were convicted of the 1989 murders of their parents, say she has no doubt the brother's parents sexually abused them. So this was a mother-father combo pack here. It's pretty disturbing and disgusting, but a reality. And, you know, if you watch my video from earlier today where we talked about uh, Daniel Radcliffe, where we talked about Alex Winter, uh, where we've talked about some of the other people like Bella Rose in the past, this is a very large reality. Our political upper echelons, unfortunately, are rife with these people. Our Hollywood elites are rife with these people. And, you know, billionaires around the world are also rife. You know, power players are into this stuff. It's gross. It's beyond gross. It, it's, it's deplorable. I know that they would never, ever have done what they did unless they felt that they had no choice. That is, was either of them, uh, of their parents, Diane uh, Vandermolen, who is speaking for the first time since she testified at their trial, told ABC News, I believe that very strongly. You know, people testified on their behalf that this was really going on. Oh, but nobody would believe that Jose and Kitty Menendez uh, would have done this to their children. Lyle and Eric shot and killed their parents. Uh, Jose Menendez, 45, a wealthy entertainment executive and Kitty Menendez, 47, at their Beverly Hills mansion on August 20th, 1989. At the time of the murders, Lyle was 21 years old and Eric was 18 years old. I can only imagine um, living with that. You know, and especially 
him being a serial molester later. I mean, we're going to get into the uh, accusations of what was actually going on with Menudo. At their first trial, defense uh, lawyer Leslie Abramson argued that Lyle and Eric shot their parents in self-defense because they feared their parents would kill them if they ever went public about the years of alleged molestation they suffered from their father. They're probably right. Uh, the first trial ended on a mistrial in 1994 because the jurors were uh, deadlocked and unable to come to a verdict. The brothers were found guilty of first-degree murder in 1996 after a second trial and sentenced to two consecutive life prison terms without the possibility of parole. And let me also say this. I remember this coming back into the news because there was an NBA hoops card, and they were uh, attending, I believe, a, a Knicks game. So they were in New York uh, after they had killed their parents. So... Going into this, again, they talk about the uh, kitty being shot 10 times, that uh, Lyle almost decapitated his dad. Again, th these were the gruesome details that they always fo focus on. You know, um, again, this was not a focus, okay? But again, Lyle admitted to molesting his younger brother, Eric, but what else did he know? And they talked about the mother being involved in this, as well, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, we're talking about also sadistic physical abuse on top of it. So, did Jose, uh, uh, let's see, uh, they get the, the last name wrong because it is Menendez. Um, the, the question is, was Ricky Martin ever a part of this? Because, as I said, there was a huge, huge, huge scandal back in the day that these kids were being trafficked. And remember, even the uh, one member of the Pussycat Dolls talked about them and how it was a prostitution ring and how they were being trafficked as well, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So generations of young entertainment boys with all these promises of millions and millions of dollars. So at first, Martin denied ever meeting Menendez... But the evidence is clear that they were acquainted. Uh, he was an RCA executive. He set up an office in Miami and was responsible for sourcing talent. He was instrumental in managing the careers of groups like Menudo, the Latin boy band Martin was a member of as a child. During the 80s and 90s, rumors started surfacing that the members of Menudo were being trafficked and sold to older men in the industry sex parties. Accusations and arrests followed in the Latin and Fil Filipino media. The news received the same media circus coverage of the O.J. Simpson trial. Not so much in America. But it happened, and uh, this is from 2015, and this is Angelo Garcia. He... Uh, he talked about the sexual abuse. And remember, uh, the, the accusations of somebody like Lou Pearlman. Thank you so much, Nick Waits. We're going to get to you in, a, in one second. But I want to do this together. Lou Pearlman, sex abuse allegations. This guy is New Kids on the Block, in NSYNC. Uh, there you go, Lou Pearlman, sex abuse accusations. Um, watch Ashley Par Parker Angel uh, address Lou Pearlman's uh, thing for boys in boy band con scene. Yeesh. Can we even play this on here? I don't know. I guess we're going to try, huh? Names and music. And so it's a real dilemma that you find yourself in. So it's sort of out there that Lou had this dark quality to him where he would use his power and influence to try to manipulate young performers into these really questionable scenarios. Oh, really? Qu you mean molest young boys? Why are we dancing around it? Why are we, what's the dance for? Lou Pearlman, not a good dude. Mike I mean, come Pearlman, on. Who worked for Transcontinental Records at the time, pulled us aside and said, look, here's the deal. There's rumors about Lou. We don't know. It's unconfirmed. Oh, oh, they don't know. Nobody ever knows, huh? Nick Waits, thank you for the super chat. Killing it, Jason. Keep it at an in-perspective during this time of information overload. Truth is scarce in today's internet climate, or perhaps it always has been. Unfortunately, it, has, it always has been, but now even the alternative no sources are feeding you partisan bullshit. And I think that's why uh, this program is important. So, guys, if you do like this, thumbs it up, share it. If you're new to the program, now's the time to subscribe. Join the Burmese Brigade. And if you can, i got to go fund me. Uh, it's how I'm keeping it going. We're going to finish that clip in a minute. We're actually almost there. 
Uh, it's going to end after tomorrow, I believe. I'm going to run it through tomorrow and then start another one on the 18th. So uh, once again, thank you for all the support out there. All right, let's continue. I'd have a thing for boys. You know, Lou would come into the rehearsal room. Oh. And he'd be like, hey, guys, let's see your abs. Take off your shirts. This kind of stuff where it feels like, oh, maybe this is part of having a mentor of a band who wants to make sure you're in good shape because that's what he would always say. Oh, yeah, you I want to make sure you're in good shape. It. Yeah, of course. That's that's what Lou Pearlman wanted. So, um, with Angelo here talking about it, let's go back to this. Whether he's known from his days in Menudo or his striking, uh, good-looking, half-naked, tattooed singing man in many viral videos that sweep social media uh, around the world, everyone has seen Angelo at one point or another. But there is no way... Anyone was pre prepared for the emotional tell-all interview that took place Thursday night uh, on Dr. Zoe Today. In order to fully understand a Angelo, all judgment must be first cast aside. The highly controversial, open bisexual man adores his fans. He has been seen performing everything from a rendition of Lenny Kravitz, American Woman, worthy of Magic Mike scene, to Little Mermaid's part of your world for the kids. Angela, Angelo may look like a bulging mass muscle on the outside, but inside is a sensitive, caring being holding a gut-wrenching story. Uh, let's see. Angelo Garcia was just shy of 11 years old when he auditioned for a spot in Menudo after seeing a television commercial in Puerto Rico during a family vacation. Traveling the globe and performing alongside fellow band member Ricky Martin, some may say simply that the rest is history. However, the rule that should apply in this situation is you never know uh, what goes beyond, on behind closed doors. Angelo's story is one filled with sexual abuse, bullying, and disappointment. I was sexually molested from the age of 8 to 14. That's the reality, and I don't know if Martin was, but... He certainly stands against sex trafficking, and he's put his money where his mouth is. Uh, and good for him for doing it, and I'm not saying he should have to come out, uh, but he is somebody who actually has, uh, has spoken out, has put money behind it, and um, that's a positive thing in my opinion. I think that you know the more people that come out and speak out against these things, uh, the better. But you know, you're always going to have this Hollywood spin, for instance, I want to point out, you know, Variety, the seven bi biggest mistakes in Law and Order, true crime, the uh, Menendez murders. So they're always going to try to downplay this, leave some doubt in there that Hollywood is as evil as you hear. But unfortunately, it's worse than you can imagine. And with that being said, we tell the truth here. It's not about a left or right perspective. It's always about right and wrong. And earlier today, uh, we told you why you should really be mad about Conor McGregor. And it also has to do with, unfortunately, alleged violent sexual abuse. You may want to actually check that out because if you don't know, now you do. And we talked about Hollywood with Harry Potter, Alex Winter, and other others here. And if you want to talk about somebody who uh, reveled in uh, this stuff, we're talking about Ghislaine Maxwell. And the story is so bizarre because there's a picture of her at In-N-Out Burger reading a book about the lives of um, intelligence people in the CIA, Mossad, and others. It's unbelievable. Nick uh, waits. Oh, man, thank you so much. Truth should be worth uh, more than Netflix. I appreciate that, man. We're trying. We're trying. And that's why we're doing it big. You know, I do everything myself uh, from the thumbnails to um, the preparation, obviously, to the studio, to doing it all with four monitors and your support. So uh, if you can... I do appreciate every five, ten, fifteen dollar donation. We'll see on the flip side, guys. There's a lot more news. I mean, we're talking about censorship with conservatives, but it's all around, and we're going to get to that in a later video. So once again, goodbye, and see you on the flip.